Dr George Paponis was born in 1953 in Tripoli and arrived with his family in Australia when he was just 18 months old. The family landed in Melbourne but soon made their way to Sydney in search of a better life. George's parents worked tirelessly to establish themselves. His father was an interstate truck driver and was rarely at home, his mother struggling to raise two children and work simultaneously. Living in a small apartment in Canterbury, George recalls being locked into his room every day while his mother went to work. She would come home at lunchtime to feed her children and then flee again, imprisoning them in the same manner. Without childcare, without friends or family support, this was the only way she knew to make ends meet and keep her children safe. As George grew, so did his passion for football. Thanks to neighbours, he learned how to handle a ball and he found refuge in directing his energies into the sport. As his prowess developed, he began to play for the Canterbury Bulldogs and then he was selected for the national Australian side. Amazingly, George managed to combine his passion for learning with his love of football, gaining a place in medicine at the University of New South Wales. Supported by his football club both emotionally and financially, George burned the candle at both ends for several years, finally achieving his medical degree. George had always been a high achiever. He was honoured with being named captain of the Kangaroos, the Australian national rugby team, in 1979, claiming the honour of becoming the first player ever born outside Australia to captain this prestigious squad. His family and the entire Greek community lauded his success. A series of neck injuries interrupted George's career in 1982 and at the age of 29 he retired. His interest in football, however, carried on with his role as chairman of the Canterbury Bulldogs until 2010. Today, George continues as a highly successful medical practitioner with a special interest in methadone clinics. He is also currently chairman of the Canterbury Leagues Club. I guess the earliest memories are just before kindergarten or around about kindergarten. Um, and I can remember my mother used to uh, work in the factory across the road and my father was an interstate truck driver so he wasn't home a lot and um, mum uh, used to lock us in the bedroom and then go to uh, work, come back at morning tea time, feed us, lock us in the one bedroom, go back at lunch time to work uh, in the factory and then come back at lunch time, let us out, feed us, lock us in the bedroom, go back again. We used to hate it. There was no uh, childcare, uh, there was no after school or preschool amenities in those days. Uh, so uh, she didn't have any family, she didn't have any friends and it was to keep her safe. She needed to work to uh, supplement my father's income to support us and uh, so it was the only way that she could actually keep a job down and uh, be assured that uh, you know we were safe. Yeah. My first school was Alexandria um, and it was probably uh, a little bit multicultural in that you know it was in the Redfern uh, area um, w where there was a big Greek population at the time. When I moved to Irwood Primary um, and you know my fondest memory of that is we moved um, over Easter and moved to a new school and my father decided to shave my head off, uh, hair off because it was sort of growing in every direction. And so I wore an anti-cap hat to school, I, I, I was terrified. My mother never drove, doesn't drive to this day. Uh, as I said, my father wasn't here all that often. Uh, my mother was a great parent, uh, but she didn't have the ability to drive you around. So um, I don't, my mother didn't see me play football till I was about 15. Um, I would catch a train, a bus, a plane, anything to get to um, training or a game, um, hitch a ride from one of the other parents. Um, I think my father first saw me play football when I was about 17 um, and when I was graded um, in 1972 I don't think my mother missed another game of football um, that I played from that day on um, and she was one of my avid fans and uh, would follow me everywhere but in the early days um, you, you know she basically couldn't uh, uh, you know follow you to sport she didn't have the ability to help you with your homework because her English, you know, wasn't um, up there. 
Um, so you had to do it yourself. Um, and you know, sometimes that makes you strive a little bit harder. My father actually bought me my first pair of football boots and a football um, and said, uh, you know, this is to keep you off the streets, um, which it basically did. And, you know, I've kept that philosophy ever since that uh, I've encouraged all my children to sort of participate in sport. Um, and, you know, it is, as I said, it's a great leveller, but uh, it also keeps you occupied. Like most immigrants, they came out here because they were looking to give their, uh, their children a better start in life. Um, and it was hard for them. Um, it was probably the first four or five years was very hard. But uh, my father was probably one of the first from our country town that came out. And within probably the first five or ten years, he then sponsored his brother. He sponsored my uh, mother's sister, uh, my grandmother. They all came out. And a lot of people that came out, uh, my father sponsored initially, would stay at our house for three or four months till they got their own job and then off they went. So we were sort of like a halfway house um, in Sydney in those days, which was, which, you know, had its benefits as well because, it, you know, it was an extended family. I remember uh, I was probably in about fourth class of primary school and I wanted a football and, um, and you know, we weren't all that well financially off. And um, in those days, there were the, uh, the paper boys that would go around with a wheelbarrow and deliver the newspapers to the houses around the suburbs. Um, so I got myself a paper run after school, two afternoons a week, so that I could save some money up and buy a football. Um, so you did what you had to do. Um, and it was, you know, I loved playing football, so, you know, I did it. The only time I felt a little bit different was when my mother wanted to put white socks with black shoes when I was going to school and I didn't, I argued over that and, it, and it, was, it wasn't so much I felt different because of who I was but you know uh, just some of the traditions of, of uh, the Greek background I guess. To retain the heritage was very important for my parents. Um, I was an altar boy here in Belmore in the local church where I was eventually married. Um, and uh, I went to Greek school here um, at the local church as well. The, the priest used to teach um, Greek to uh, the immigrants on uh, two days a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays from four till six. Um, and you know, probably one of the very few fights I got into was going to Greek school um, after English school. Um, you know, I would rather be playing football and kicking a ball around. Um, and so I, I didn't really want to go at the time, uh, but I look back at it now, it's the best thing my parents ever did for me, uh, one of the best things they ever did for me. But someone did call me a wog on the way to Greek school, um, and I wasn't real fussed about going in the first place, so we ended up in a bit of an altercation, but, um, but it was only short and brief. Most of my friends uh, were not Greek growing up. Um, um, that sort of changed a little bit along the way, but I mean, to me, it doesn't matter what culture or, or where you're from. It's if you're a friend, you're a friend. There are probably two defining moments. Um, when I was in um, about second year at high school, um, I uh, decided that you know I needed to focus on my studies if I wanted to become a doctor and go to university um, and I stopped playing touch football at lunchtime and I went to the library and I got into a few little scuffles because I sort of veered away from the friends that that I had at school because I I knew I had to sort of buckle down and do do some hard yards if I wanted to succeed um, and you know that brought a little bit of friction but you know I lived with that and, and got over it. Um, so I think that was probably a defining moment for me um, and I guess my football career um, in 1972 I, I had my face smashed up pretty bad um, in a tackle, um, broke my nose and eye socket and I was in hospital for a week and, and um, I, uh, you know, took a while to recover from that. I guess that sort of just it brought me down to earth a little bit. 
in those days, um, you know, we didn't know what a banker or a, a futures trader or, you know, a stockbroker was. I mean, there was, you know, it was, you're going to be a lawyer, a doctor, a dentist, um, and that's what you're going to be, and that, that's a measure of success. Um, and there was a little bit of push um, in, in that aspect. But your parents can push as hard as you like, unless you're prepared to put in the work, it's not, not going to succeed. So I was determined to succeed, as, as much for myself as to reward and give back to my parents for the sacrifices that they'd made. My uh, younger sister is the only one that was born in Australia. She's lived in Greece for the last 22 years uh, in Syria. She has four children. Um, so I've taken my family back um, a few times. Um, and uh, my children now um, are very proud of their Greek heritage. Um, uh, my daughter's getting married next May and only yesterday she rang up and said, uh, her fiance wants to have a bottle of ouzo on the, on every table, and they want to get out and and dance the cleftic or um, around you know ouzo shots on the floor, and uh, and they she asked the re the reception place whether they could break plates. Um, so, I mean, they're really getting into it. My my son is teaching himself Greek, um, so you know he's enrolling in Greek classes in Melbourne uh, where he's working at the moment. So. You know, as part of your children, um, you embrace it a lot more as well. I guess in my early days, I, I probably didn't embrace it as much, um, but I certainly do now, um, and, and my children do as well. I'm very proud of, of um, having achieved what I've achieved. Um, um, not everyone gets to captain their, their country um, in whatever sport it is um, that they excel in. Um, now, when I say your country, I mean I've been brought up in Australia, I've, I'm 59 years old and I've been here for 58 years, so, you know, I consider myself an Australian of, of Greek origin. Uh, I was born in Greece, I'm very proud of my origin, but I'm very proud to be an Australian as well. I think the biggest thing is that uh, we realise the sacrifices that our parents made. Um, in the, I mean, I couldn't fathom grabbing my wife and two young children under the age of two and going to Spain or Finland and not knowing the language, not knowing anyone, not having any family support, um, not having a job, uh, not having a place to live. I just can't fathom how they did that. I couldn't ever have thought that I would ever do that. Um, so I, I just think they're all, you know, amazing.